this video, I'd like to show you one of the new idea scripting functions that was included in uh, version 12 of idea. It is something that I'm really happy to finally have access to, uh, something I've been sort of asking for for a long time. Basically, now we have access to the equation editor from the script. So now we can open up the equation editor, enter in an equation within the equation editor, and then send it back to the script. And then the script can insert that into the uh, your actual, whatever your criteria might be within your script. So that is really cool. That's something we've been missing for a long time. So I'm really excited about that. So here, I'm going to show you how to use it. I've already created a script, so I'm not going to bother walking through you how to create a script. But I'll show you what I've done. Is I created a dialogue, basically, where I'm asking for a database. Then I've got a button to select the criteria. So if I click on that button, I'm going to open up the equation editor. And then whatever the equation editor returns is going to be placed in this text box. Really simple dialogue. So let's go look at this code. So this is my standard um, menu sort of function where I'm calling the, the dialogue. I'm seeing if the database is already open. Uh, if it is, we'll use that as the file name. If not, the file name will be re uh, remain blank. Notice I have the on error resume next. The main reason being that if there's no database open, this will return an error. So if this returns an error, the script's not going to stop because I have the on error resume next. So this keep on going and the S file name will be blank. Then I've got a, an extraction. So this is just a basic extraction, except now I'm going to be using the equation within the uh, that's obtained from the dialogue. So I've got a couple of variables that I set up, namely one to hold the file name and one to hold the equation. So now we can go in, we can select the file, and then we can create an equation based on that file, which is really cool. We couldn't do that before. We'd have to have sort of like a, an edit box and paste something in, and it's never been validated. Now with the equation editor, the equation is going to be validated. We know the fields are good. We know the logic's good. Uh, well, no, we never are sure the logic's good. We know the syntax is good and everything like that. So we're not going to get any syntax errors or problems saying missing fields or something like that. And then I have my uh, function that controls my dialogue. And I've got several videos on how to create that on my site. So my function is called display it. So every time we interact with this dialogue, we fire up this function called display it. Uh, basically, I am at the very beginning when I'm opening this up. Text three is this item here, so I'm just making it blank. Then, if I do the first push button, so push button one is actually getting my file. I go down and I call the get file name. So I'm just opening up the file explorer, getting the file name, and returning that. Uh, the next part is this, this is the new part is now I can go get the equation and here I've written a little snippet here get equation and now what we have here is client equation editor. So what we do is we send the file name to the equation editor and then when we close it hit validate or hit save and validate whatever equation we've created gets saved into this variable get equation which we would then use as part of our extraction criteria. So that is really cool, because now we can do that. Uh, the rest is under the cancel button, okay button. Here I've just got some code here to uh, to display the, the information, like the equation or the file name and so on, you know, depending on the different scenarios. So I've got my trusty general ledger, oops, sorry, my trusty general ledger file all ready to run. So let's just do a, an extraction on this and see how that works. So I'm just going to go run this. So we open it up. So we've got the database. And now we've got the criteria button. So if I click on criteria, it opens up the equation editor. Yay! This is something, I'm sorry, I'm really excited about it's something that I've wanted in an idea script uh, in a long time. So now I can just do, say, amount, say, greater than 5,000. High values, whatever it may be. And here I'm posting the equation in this text box so you can see what you've done. The unfortunate part is if I open up criteria again, 
we're starting from scratch. It doesn't actually remember the uh, uh, sorry, it doesn't actually remember the the equation that was written. Maybe that's something for an upgrade in future versions. So once that's done, I just click that OK. That performs the extraction. It's complete. Oh, I didn't do the refresh list in my script. I forget to do that. But here's my new file. We can see that all the amounts are greater than 5,000. And if we go into the history, we can see here we've got the criteria amount greater than 5,000. So this is a new functionality that hopefully a lot of users will use because I think it's really worthwhile. Now, one of the problems with being is if you have a script that you'll be running on maybe version 12 and version 11, because this only works on version 12, won't work on version 11, you'll get an error. So let me show you how to get around that. Okay, now I switched over to a version 11 of IDEA. So if I try running this in version 11, and I hit the criteria, it's giving me an error saying object does not support this property or method because this property, the equation editor, does not exist in version 11 of IDEA. So how you get around this error is you're going to have to do a bit of fancy coding in that you need to figure out what version the user is running that on. Now the first thing that you want to do is we'll create a, we'll create a variable to hold the version number. And this we will test. And then at the very start of the script, we will go and uh, figure out what that is. And how we do that is we use a shell command. What we could do is at the very top, the sub main, I'm going to create a variable to hold the shell. And then I am going to set the shell. So that we can access the shell. So the shell has lots of the information that allows us to access all kinds of different things. And then finally, I'm just going to grab some code here. Uh, let me just format it. That allows me to access the uh, the registry and get the idea information. So here I am opening the shell. Then I'm using the shell to get the registry. So this is the location in the registry. So it's only read, so we're not doing any writing or anything. So we're not actually doing anything to the registry. We're just reading the information from the registry. And this grabs the, the version number. And then from that, I figured out what part of this is the registry. And let's just do a message box so we can see that this works. Hold on a sec. Now let's do an exit sub because I don't want to go any farther. So if I run this now, oops, idea version. Oh, I forgot to define idea version. Sorry about that. One sec. There we go. And here, I'm just doing all the stuff that I tell you not to do. Terrible. Ah, there we go. So it's showing that it is version 11. So, you know, great. So now we know it's version 11. So we can test if this is a version 11 or if it's not version 12. So what we could do here is in the new dialog is for the criteria is maybe we will just, you know, instead of having two different dialogs, maybe we will just hide this or, uh, or, or disable the, the button so that the user can actually access that. And how we go do that. Okay, so I'm back in the display it. So I just went back and had to figure something out for a second. Anyways, okay, so what I've done is when we open up the dialog, I'm checking to see is this greater than or equal to 12, version 12. If it is, then I'm enabling the button. And if not, I am disabling the button. There's also some code down here that if the file name is not equal is uh, is selected. So if there is a file open, that you enable the you make sure the push button two is enabled. So this was for version twelve and higher. So what I've done here is I've just added on the little if statement here for twelve. Then in order for the push button to be enabled, 
or sorry, for the dialog, the criteria button to be enabled, it has to be, you have to have a file name, select it, plus it has to be greater than version 12. And also we can add in, uh, you know, some, some text here, you know, if it's not enabled, and uh, we can just add that in. Also, if you really want to be fancy, you can add in uh, maybe a message here in the text three. So, you know, like maybe something like, please upgrade to version 12 or something like that. Uh, you know, if they're using a, a previous version. So again, we'll just go back. So the main code added here is the client equation editor. And actually, let's just go in before finishing off. Go back to version 12. Uh, macros, there we go. So now if I go look here, I'll be able to find it. Wondering why it wasn't in version 11? Well, because it doesn't exist. There we go, equation editor. So it allows you to validate criteria in the equation editor and returns the equation as a string to be used in different tasks. So I think this is way cool and something that that is way overdue to be added to IdeaScript. So hopefully you like this video and uh, talk to you in the next one.